currently am taking the PhD program in the Alliance Manchester Business School, the University of Manchester in the UK. I'm very proud to be part of the Faculty of Business and excellent learning system, good reputations, a bunch of facilities to support learning activities, and of course, a high quality lecturer. The program also has that appropriates for our professional needs and also career development. So overall, the knowledge that I got from the school is beneficial to support my professional career and also my academic path. And I believe that the Faculty of Business Paranatha will always produce a high quality graduates every year. Thank you.
Faculty of Business will provide an extraordinary learning experience supported by highly competent and qualified lecturers. Today, business is evolving rapidly. Therefore, an innovative way of doing business is needed. Individual with problem-solving skills, including analytical and creative thinking, is essential to face a range of challenges of growing a future business. Our business faculty offers a unique way to educating and developing a future leaders who can add Christian values to their society. Equipped with advanced facilities that support you in the application of business knowledge. The learning process is implemented by combining on-site and online learning to support effective learning methods. The food learning process will familiarize you with active discussion, especially about business science, which often occurs in the real business world. The Faculty of Business has outstanding alumni all around Indonesia and the world. Let's start the journey with us today and be ready for tomorrow. Hi, I'm Reza Prisandi, the alumni are Faculty of Business Maranata. I'm working for Indonesia FSA or Autoritas Jasa Keuangan and currently I'm taking the PhD program in the Alliance Manchester Business School, the University of Manchester in UK. I'm very proud to be part of the Faculty of Business family. The school has excellent learning system, good reputations, a bunch of facilities to support learning activities, and of course, a high quality lecturer. The program also have an updated curriculum that appropriates for our professional needs and also career development. So overall, the knowledge that I got from the school is beneficial to support my professional career and also my academic and I believe that the Faculty of Business Maranatha will always produce a high quality graduates every year. Thank you. Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to workshop creating design work for SMEs, small medium enterprises. This workshop is a collaboration between faculty of Business from Maranatha Christian University, Uni University of Estel LaSalle from Philippines, and Indonesia Micro and Small Enterprises Association in West Java, or called by Hibmi Kindo Jawa Barat. First and foremost, I would like to welcome the Honorable Mrs. Lily Freida Kabadu Kamabangun as Philippine Seed Ice. Uh, director and all member from USLS Keep Me Kindle. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Raden Arfi Arshitania, or you can call me Arfi. I'm from International Office Maranatha uh, uh, as your MC for today. This event can be watched at Fakultas Business Maranatha YouTube channel. So if some of you missed at some point, you can watch it again at YouTube. Move to the next agenda. We will listening to Indonesia national anthem.
Okay, before we start our workshop, it's better we started with a prayer. This prayer will be led by Mrs. Dr. Rapina S.A.M.S.E. Aka. This screen and time is yours. Thank you, Arvi. Ladies and gentlemen, I will need to pray in the Christian way. Please kindly follow me to pray based on your way. Let's we pray. Dear our Father in the heaven, thank you so much for all these things which you have given upon us. Please bestow your blessings in this webinar. Please teach and guide us through this webinar. We also pray for all committee and everyone else who involved in this webinar. May you bless them and make them become blessings for all people around us. Finally, please make we realize that this event should glorify your name. Only in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Okay, thank you so much, Mrs. Rapina, for the prayer. Now I would like to invite our vice deans of Faculty Business of Maranatha Christian University for welcoming remarks. Mrs. Imelda Junita, SAMT, of this screen and time is yours. Thank you, Arfi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Faculty of Business, Maranatha Christian University, it is a great pleasure to welcome you all to our workshop creating decent work for SME. We would like to express our appreciation to all the speakers today. Mr. Deris Prianto as Regional Representative Board of Hipmikindo, West Java area. Mr. Ejimar Tupas from University of San Lazar, Philippines. And Mrs. Susanti Saragi from Faculty of Business Maranata. We are also welcoming all the participants who have joined us for this workshop. I'm delightful to be with you all today, even though this event is being held virtually. In many countries, SME do more than create employment. They are also engines of economic growth and social development. However, SME still face major challenges. Those are productivity and informality. Therefore, academics and associations should support SMEs to reach their full potential and secure a better future of work for everyone. We believe that this workshop will be an inspiring academic event and will become a great platform for many ideas to support SME. Ladies and gentlemen, have an inspiring workshop from all the speakers. My God bless you all. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for your speech, Mrs. Imelda. Now we are moving on to our main event that we've been waiting for. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of participants that waiting for to hear our speakers. So before that, I want to read our moderator CP for today. Okay, his name is Dr. Surya Satyawan, S-A-M-S-E. He is a lecturer in Bachelor of Management Faculty of Business, Universitas Kristen Maranatha. His education are doctoral program in economics, Universitas Katolik Parahyangan from 2017 until 2022. Master of Science program in management science, Universitas Gajah Mada from 2002 until 2005. And vocation program in English, Universitas Kristen Maranatha from 1989 until 2001, Bachelor Program in Management, Universitas Kristen Maranatha, uh, to the one, 1995 and 1995 until 1999. His experience are Director of Partnership, Universitas Kristen Maranatha since 2022, Reviewer at Journal 
Jurnal Administrasi Bisnis Universitas Katolik Parahyangan since 2019, Director at Jurnal Management Maranatha since 2019, Vice Deans at Faculty of Economics Universitas Kristen Maranatha 2012 until 2016, and, and then the Coordinator of International Class Faculty of Economics 2009, uh, 2016 until 2019, Vice Coordinator of Capital Market Corner in Universitas Kristen Maranatha 2006 until 2009, Coordinator of Capital Market Laboratory from 2006 until 2011. Before I hand the screen over to our moderator today, I have a few information items that cover this session. First, if you have any question during the presentation, just type your question into the chat box. And at, at the end of the speaker session, our moderator will read the question to the speakers. And the last, we are really appreciate if you could give us a feedback at the end of the session to our speakers. So without any further ado, please join me and welcome our moderator for today, Mr. Dr. Surya Setiawan, SAMSE. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Arvi. Okay, good, mor uh, good morning for uh, the presenter for today. And good morning also for the participant today. Uh, we have uh, three sessions. Okay. Uh, the first one is from uh, if we can do, yeah, uh, we call it uh, Bapak Deris Frianto. Okay, Bapak Deris Frianto, good morning. Nice to see you again, Pak Deris. Good morning, Mr. Surya. Nice to see you again. Okay, the second one will be uh, Mr. Uh, Engineer Tupas okay, from uh, San Lazal. Bakalal Philippines, uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, and Gimmer. Okay, the third one is Ibu Susanti Sridawati Saragi, okay, uh, from um, Universitas Islam Matarata. Okay, so we have uh, three uh, best uh, uh, session, okay, in this, uh, in this uh, morning. Uh, this morning. Okay, the first one is Bapak Deris uh, Frianto. Okay, uh, Bapak Deris Frianto is from Indonesian Micro and Small Entre Entrepreneurs Association, or in Indonesia, we call it Himpunan Pengusaha Mikro dan Kecil Indonesia. He is the regional representative board of Hipnikindo, West Java, Indonesia. He graduated from a banking department, uh, Akmi, Bandung. Bachelor in Law, Universitas Pasundan, and Master in Management in STIA or Sekolah Tinggi Ilmu Ekonomi Pasundan. He has uh, or, or he also has a lot of experience from uh, well-known enterprises in Indonesia and also active in lots of community services. Okay, uh, Bapak Deris, uh, the screen is yours in about forty minutes. I am very surprised for this morning. And I saw a lot of uh, participants of from Philippines. This is lot. So uh, I think it my presentation in Indonesian language. So I'm sorry because uh, uh, I give this uh, file first in Indonesian speaking. Okay. <clears throat> I will start maybe. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semuanya. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Nusantara. Yang saya hormati Dekan Fakultas Bisnis Universitas Kristen Maranatha yang saat ini diwakili oleh Wakil Dekan Bidang Akademik, Ibu Imelda Junita SEMT, kemudian Ketua Program Studi Magister Akuntansi Universitas Kristen Maranatha, 
Ibu Dr. Ratina, SMSI AKTA. Kemudian eh, ini narasumber yang luar biasa. Fakulti University of SPLSLA US LS, Bapak Philippines Business Development Unit Head of Department of Trade and Industry BPI, Negros Presidential Province Office, Engineer Engineer to Pass MBA GB. Welcome, Mister. It is uh, nice to see you, and hopefully we can work together. On going uh, about uh, business, and then uh, lecture of management department of Maranta Christian University, Ibu Susanti at Saradi M A M S E, and then a lecture of bachelor of degree program in management Maranta Christian University, Bapak Dr Surya Setiawan M D S E M S E, dua kali kita ketemu ya Pak sebagai moderator, terima kasih, dan para peserta webinar. <coughs> Oke, okay, kita akan coba mungkin materi bisa di next. Ya, yeah. memang eh, pada kesempatan ini saya sedikit akan tetap membahas. Jadi mungkin eh, informasi yang kedua, tapi mungkin eh, apa namanya peserta yang berbeda. Karena kemarin mungkin dari Korea, sekarang dari Filipina. Mengenai perkembangan UMKM di Jawa Barat. Dilihat dari sudut pandang asosiasi Hibikindo. Regarding this development of UMKM in West Java from the perspective of the Hibikindo Association. Yang akan memberi masukan, menggambaran mengenai uh, perkembangan UMKM, para pelaku UMKM, khususnya usaha mikro dan kecil di Jawa Barat. Bapak Ibu yang berbahagia, saya sudah sampaikan bahwa Hipikindo merupakan satu asosiasi yang menjembatani pengembangan usaha mikro dan kecil, khususnya di Jawa Barat dan Indonesia. Seperti misi dan visi dari Hipikindo adalah memberikan pendidikan, pelatihan, advokasi, serta pengembangan produk. Our Hipikindo provides education, training, product development, dan uh, kita juga memiliki tanggung jawab untuk membantu khususnya mikro dan kecil. Seperti digambarkan bahwa usaha mikro dan kecil adalah usaha ekonomi produktif yang berdiri dilakukan oleh orang atau perorangan atau badan dengan ketentuan maksimum modal yang dibuat. Pak Surya, apakah langsung ditransfer atau langsung saja Pak Surya? Uh, maaf Pak, memotong. Boleh untuk mengkencangkan suaranya sebentar karena tidak terdengar. Tidak terdengar ya. Halo? Nah, nah oh, kayak kita. Gitu. Ya, terima kasih banyak. Pak Surya, apakah langsung translate atau lanjut saja Pak Surya? Nanti saya kesimpulannya baru oh, saya translate pakai bahasa Inggris. Oke, okay, uh, dia, uh, I will summarize the Mr. Barry's uh, presentation at the end of uh, this presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Surya. Oke, okay, next. Kita mengetahui bahwa UMKM memiliki dasar hukum yaitu Peraturan Pemerintah Nomor 7 Tahun 2021 tentang kemudahan pelindungan dan pemberdayaan koperasi dan usaha mikro. Has a legal of business, namely Government Regulation Number no. 7 of 2021, concerning in the ease of protection and empowerment of cooperative and micro and small business. UMKM yang telah diterbitkan oleh pemerintah bersama peraturan pelaksana lainnya dari Undang-Undang Nomor 11 tahun 2021 tentang Undang-Undang Cipta Kerja yang berlaku mulai eh, Februari 2021. Kemudian turunannya ada PP21 nomor eh, PP nomor 7 tahun 2021 memberi banyak kemudahan untuk UMKM dan PP nomor 7 tahun 2001 sama memberikan memuat berbagai aturan atau kebijakan kemudahan-kemudahan untuk usaha UMKM mengenai perajinan, fasilitasi, dan pembiayaan. Next. Pada kesempatan ini saya akan coba bedah dengan tiga segmentasi atau tiga poin, yaitu yang pertama adalah penyelamatan, no safety, kemudian pemulihan, dan yang ketiga adalah normalisasi atau penormalan. 
Untuk penyelamatan, pemerintah telah berupaya memberikan fasilitas kredit UMKM yang diberikan ruang untuk menjual produknya. Dampak adanya cicilan atau pemul atau untuk pemulihan yang kedua tadi dengan grace period yang lebih panjang dengan bunga yang sangat bersahabat yaitu maksimal 3% malah ada yang sekarang di bawah 3% memberikan ruang bagi UMKM untuk mengoptimalkan dana pinjaman dengan eksekusi strategi. Yang ketiga mengenai penormalan Alternatif pembiayaan seperti koperasi, B, BUMDES, dan lembaga keuangan sejenisnya memberi fleksibilitas bagi UMKM yang belum dengan resiko yang lebih kecil. Kemudian dari tujuh perusahaan, ini menghadapi kendala akibat rekan bisnis mereka yang berdampak sangat buruk atau tidak beroperasi secara normal, baik di skala UMK maupun UMB, kecil dan besar. Kita juga bisa melihat bahwa adanya penurunan ini dampaknya memang sangat signifikan bagi UMK menghadapi kendala keuangan yang cukup besar, yaitu sekitar 56,4 persen. Dan bagi yang besar, 72,47 persen. Itu luar biasa. Uh, Mr. Topaz, then the out of uh, seven of out the ten companies face of face do the their business partner being So maybe badly, I say, effective but enable for overhead normally. But the UMKM or UMC and UMB skills percentage is uh, really uh, not very good from Indonesia. Next, pada kesempatan ini di halaman ini kita bisa melihat persentase mungkin masih kecil ya. Tapi ini eh, dampaknya sangat luar biasa penurunannya pada saat pandemi. Jadi kita bisa melihat rekapitulasi dari UMKM yang terdampak pada pandemi saat eh, 2020 sampai 2021 lah di Jawa Barat. Saya coba mengurai dampak pandemi bagi pelaku UMKM khususnya di Jawa Barat secara umum. Nah ini ada gambarannya. 8 dari 10 perusahaan atau pelaku UMKM cenderung mengalami penurunan permintaan. Karena Pelanggan atau klien juga terdampak terdampak COVID-19 dan ini kita bisa melihat persentasenya penurunan yang luar biasa. That's uh, eight out of every ten companies or UMKM tends to experience the decline in uh, demand because uh, the customer of clients they are also uh, effective to COVID-19. We can the percentage is very high to uh, pandemic COVID-19. Next. Uh, kita coba urai salah satu mengenai permasalahan UMKM ini akibat dari pandemi. Penurunan jumlah UMKM dan kontribusi UMKM terhadap PDB Indonesia disebabkan oleh Pandemi tahun 2020 sampai dengan 2021 lalu. Permasalahan yang dialami sebagai berikut. Yang pertama, perubahan pada pola konsumsi barang dan jasa masyarakat di masa pandemi dari online, eh, maaf, dari offline ke online. Biasanya orang berkunjung ke toko, ke supermarket, gitu kan, sambil ya refreshing atau apa. Tapi dengan adanya pandemi, Mau tidak mau, suka tidak suka, para pelanggan itu ber- beralih ke online. Yang kedua, UMKM mengalami permasalahan tenaga kerja akibat pemberlakuan pembatasan sosial berskala besar atau PSBB. Perubahan-perubahan itu terjadi dan memang mengikuti arahan dari pemerintah. Yang ketiga, mengenai hambatan distribusi produk. Karena tidak boleh adanya pengiriman barang, segala macam, akhirnya dampak yang luar biasa kepada distribusi barang. Dan yang keempat adalah kesulitan dari bahan baku produksi. Bagaimana kita mau memproduksi bahan baku apabila e, pabrik atau apapun itu e, tidak diperbolehkan untuk melakukan aktivitas. Next. Nah ini e, perubahan yang terjadi melihat perubahan kriteria UMKM Karena ini menyangkut kepada Undang-Undang Cipta Kerja. Jadi eh, apa 
adanya perubahan dari tahun Undang-Undang nomor 20 tahun 2008 ada empat kategori, yaitu usaha besar, menengah, kecil, dan mikro. Kemudian menurut Undang-Undang atau Peraturan Pemerintah nomor 7 tahun 2021, hanya ada tiga kategori, usaha menengah, kecil, dan mikro. Akan tetapi eh, tingkat eh, daripada besaran modal itu menjadi faktor perhatian dari pemerintah. Next. Juga dalam hal perubahan pendapatan UMKM dalam masa pandemi, kita bisa melihat bahwa penurunan presentasi, presentasi untuk omset yang menurun dari 86 persen di tahun 2020 menjadi 74 persen, hampir 12 persen di tahun 2021 atau mengalami ya penurunan sekitar 12 persen. For all at Indonesia, also in term of change in UMKM income during the pandemic, we can see that the presentation decline in UMKM turn over has decrease from 86 in 2020 to 74 in 2021 or has decreased by around uh, 12% ya sia sia kemudian meningkatnya presentasi UMKM yang mempertahankan omset dari 11% pada tahun 2020 menjadi 17% pada tahun 2021 atau meningkat 6% dan yang ketiga, meningkatnya presentasi UMKM dari omset 2% tahun 2020 menjadi 9% dari tahun 2021. Kemudian pentingnya UMKM sangat pemerintah begitu perhatian. Sebagai salah satu pilar perekonomian Indonesia, UMKM memiliki peran yang sangat signifikan. Yaitu, yang pertama, UMKM memiliki kontribusi besar terhadap PDB yaitu sekitar 61,97 persen dari total PDB nasional atau setara dengan 8.500 triliun pada tahun 2020. Yang kedua, UMKM menyerap tenaga kerja dalam jumlah yang besar yaitu sekitar 97 persen dari daya serap dunia usaha terhak pada tahun 2020. Jumlah UMKM yang banyak berbanding lurus dengan banyaknya lapangan pekerjaan di Indonesia. Sehingga UMKM memiliki andil besar dalam penyerapan tenaga kerja. Ya kita juga bisa lihat sekarang ada beberapa contoh. Untuk delivery saja sebenarnya sudah banyak ya. Saya tidak bisa sebutkan satu-satu tapi sudah banyak. Ada beberapa yang melakukan bisnis di eh, apa, pengiriman barang. Yang ketiga UMKM menyerap kredit terbesar tahun 2018 sebesar kurang lebih 1 triliun. Next. Dampak UMKM di masa pandemi COVID-19 dan strategi perkembangan sangat berpengaruh terhadap keberlangsungan UMKM di Indonesia, khususnya di Jawa Barat, yang berasal dari berbagai kota di seluruh Jawa Barat. UMKM yang dijadikan sampel adalah sebanyak 22 mitra usaha di Jawa Barat, yang sebagian besar atau sekitar 7 persennya adalah wanita dan lainnya laki-laki. Kemudian metode yang digunakan adalah saya akan coba tadi menggambarkan bahwa eh, kita bisa melihat bagaimana usaha di Jawa Barat khususnya tetap eh, bertahan walaupun ada penurunan dan mudah-mudahan saya berharap di tahun 2002 selanjutnya kita para pelaku UMKM bisa memberikan andil yang luar biasa dan bisa meningkatkan eh, boleh dikatakan eh, apa eh, Pendapatan bagi para pelaku khususnya mikro dan kecil. Next. Ini adalah upaya pemerintah. Jadi pemerintah sudah melakukan beberapa program untuk memajukan UMKM di Indonesia. Yang pertama adalah Undang-Undang Cipta Kerja. Dari total keseluruhan jumlah UMKM di Indonesia sebanyak 64 
1,13 juta UMKM yang masih berada sekitar informasi, sehingga perlu dorong untuk bertransformasi ke sektor formal. Indonesia masih memiliki kendala dalam perizinan, dan mudah-mudahan dengan adanya perubahan perizinan pun sekarang bisa memberikan dampak yang luar biasa. Kemudian salah satu substansi yang diatur adalah mengenai kemudahan, perlindungan dan pemberdayaan UMKM. Pemerintah berharap melalui Undang-Undang Cipta Kerja, UMKM dapat berkembang dan berdaya saing. Kemudian yang kedua adalah program PEN atau Pemulihan Ekonomi Nasional. Ini adalah salah satu program yang dicetuskan oleh pemerintah untuk pemulihan ekonomi akibat dampak pandemi. Program ini juga merupakan respon pemerintah atas penurunan aktivitas yang berdampak, khususnya pada sektor informal atau UMKM. Juga program ini juga berdasarkan pada Undang-Undang Nomor 23 Tahun 20 yang diubah menjadi Peraturan Pemerintah Nomor 43 Tahun 2020. <tuh> Kemudian program yang ketiga adalah pembiayaan investasi kepada koperasi melalui lembaga pengelola dana bergulir atau LPDB, lembaga pengelola dana bergulir. Kemudian adanya kredit usaha rakyat atau KUR, di mana upaya lain dari pemerintah untuk memajukan UMKM yaitu program kredit usaha, usaha rakyat atau KUR yang disalurkan melalui lembaga keuangan dengan pola pemin penjaminan. Adapun biaya jasa atau suku bunga di atas kredit atau pembiayaan modal dari pemerintah atau subsidi yaitu dengan tujuan untuk meningkatkan akses pembiayaan dan memperkuat permodalan bagi UMKM. Dan yang terakhir adalah program eh, Germas BBI atau Gerakan Nasional Bangsa maaf, Gerakan Nasional Bangga Buatan Indonesia (BBI) Bangga Buatan Indonesia. Jadi gerakan ini merupakan salah satu program pemerintah sebagai upaya pemerintah untuk memajukan UMKM yang diluncurkan tahun 2020. Jadi tujuannya adalah mendorong uh, produk uh, nasional, branding produk lokal untuk menciptakan industri baru dan tentunya meningkatkan pertumbuhan ekonomi melalui program ini. Pemerintah mendorong pelaku UMKM untuk bergabung di dalam platform digital. Dan terakhir adalah program pemerintah untuk perluasan ekspor produk Indonesia lalu ASEAN Online Sale Day atau EOSD atau Hari Belanja ASEAN merupakan acara belanja yang dilakukan seserentak ASEAN untuk platform niaga elektronik jadi kita tahu tahun 2020 juga meningkatkan ekspor untuk produk-produk yang diluncurkan oleh UMKM. Dan next, ini adalah program Jawa Barat yang mengikuti program daripada pemerintah. Tadi sudah hampir sama, tapi ini adalah satu hal bahwa pentingnya UMKM bagi perekonomian di Jawa Barat dengan program yang ini mudah-mudahan. Uh, ada pun uh, keinginan dari pemerintah untuk mendapatkan pendapatan dari sektor UMKM. Jadi kenapa hal ini sangat penting? Tadi bahwa uh, jumlah UMKM sangat besar sampai dengan terplos uh, apa uh, desa terpencil. Kemudian UMKM tergolong padat karya, potensi pertumbuhan dan kesempatan kerja juga semakin besar. Yang ketiga, UMKM banyak terdapat sektor pertanian serta tidak langsung mendukung pembangunan nasional. Yang keempat, UMKM membantu dalam menampung banyak pekerja yang memiliki tingkat pendidikan rendah. Jadi hmm. eh, sampai dasar terendah pun UMKM bisa mampu untuk menyerap. Kemudian yang kelima, kondisi krisis ekonomi. UMKM mampu untuk bertahan dan eksis. Eh, dan sekarang pun sudah ada Kelihatan ada peningkatan di tahun 2022 awal ini. Kemudian yang kena menjadi titik awal mobilitas investasi, baik di tingkat desa sampai tingkat nasional. Yang ketujuh menjadi alat untuk mengalihkan pengeluaran konsumsi warga. Dan kedelapan, UMKM mampu menyediakan barang-barang kebutuhan yang sangat-sangat-sangat murah. Kemudian yang sembilan, 
diharapkan melalui program investasi dan penanaman modal UMKM mampu beradaptasi dalam kemajuan teknologi. Dan yang terakhir, UMKM berharap memiliki tingkat fleksibilitas yang tinggi. Mungkin itu saja yang sangat bisa saya saran apa paparkan pada presentasi pagi hari ini. Kami juga dari Hipmikindo berusaha untuk memberikan pendidikan, pelatihan, advokasi, dan pengembangan produk-produk UMKM. Dan Alhamdulillah kita bersyukur bahwa kita juga sudah beberapa pelaku UMKM khususnya itu bisa mengimpor produk-produk dari Indonesia ke luar, ke Malaysia, termasuk Filipina juga ada, Mr. Topaz, kemudian Singapura, dan beberapa negara lain. Dan kita juga berharap uh, ini adalah salah satu langkah dari Maranata yang sangat luar biasa. Saya sangat apresiasi dan berterima kasih banyak. Semoga kerjasama antara Hipikido dengan Maranata bisa terus dijalin dengan baik. Itu saja mungkin yang bisa disampaikan Pak Surya, Mr. Topas. Jadi sekali lagi bahwa uh, kerjasama di bidang pendidikan pelatihan ini salah satu dengan Universitas Besar Maranata. Mungkin nanti bisa dengan saat ini juga dengan USLS luar biasa saya sangat bersyukur bisa bertemu dengan sahabat-sahabat kami di uh, USLS University thank you so much uh, demikian presentasi yang saya sampaikan mohon maaf, maaf apabila banyak kekurangan terima kasih wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh om santi 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 om Waalaikumsalam Pak Daris. Okay, thank you for uh, Pak Daris for the presentation. And for the first presentation, uh, I will make a conclusion. Maybe a little bit what uh, Mr. Daris has uh, given to us. Okay. Uh, so uh, Pak Daris also said about the rescuing, uh, the uh, rescuing the uh, small and medium enterprises from this this. Or debt or credit, so uh, uh, lots of uh, Indonesian also makes a risk schedule for the grace period for the business credit and normalization for the uh, small and medium enterprises in Indonesia. So and also, uh, but it is said that seven out of ten uh, small and medium enterprises get the impact from the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, so. Um, the Indonesian government also support the uh, Indonesian uh, small and medium enterprises uh, to run normally and uh, run well because uh, it can be said that the Indonesian uh, small and medium enterprises can struggle and can create job opportunity even in the pandemic era. And, and Uh, the last one, the, uh, Mr. Davis also memorized all the uh, Indonesian to buy and use the Indonesian product to make uh, our uh, small and medium enterprises uh, can struggle uh, from the uh, imported product. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Davis, for your uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you, Mr. Surya. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome, Mr. Davis. The second one, uh, we will. Uh, We will listen to uh, the presentation from, uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Engelman Tupas. Uh, sorry for uh, this spell, <laughs> Mr. Tupas. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Tupas is uh, from uh, is a faculty member from Department of Trade and Industry, University of St. Lazar, Bacolod, Philippines. <clears throat> Uh, he also got a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, graduate from University of Naples, Occidental Recollectors, uh, sorry for the misspell, in 1991, and subsequently passed the last uh, exam for uh, civil engineers. Mr. Tupas also graduated from Master in This uh, administration or uh, MBA program from University of Saint Lazare in 1996, and graduated Juris Doctor from University of Saint Lazare in 2002. 
completed the uh, academic requirements uh, leading to a Doctor of Management major in Human Resource Management from the University of Visayas in Cebu City and recently doing the dissertation to pass, uh, to pass for the dissertation and diploma on innovative of creative uh, entrepreneurship from the Institute uh, International in August 2022. Mr. Tupas' uh, working experiences are the first one is formerly connected for the United Nations or World Food Program as a assisted food for uh, work project and as project evaluation for officer and also a part-timer professor in uh, three schools, College of Business and Accountancy of University of Saint Lazare, um, Civil Engineering Department, and Graduate School of Carlos Hidalgo Memorial State University, and also Graduate School from La Consolación uh, College. He also the head of the Business Department Division, Department of Trade and Industry in the Lagos uh, Dental Provincial Office. Okay, uh, please welcome Mr. Emilio Tupas. This screen is yours in about 40 minutes. I'm sorry, Mr. Tupas, uh, we, can, we can't hear you. Sorry, Mr. Lutubas, but we still can hear you. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah, good I can hear you. Thank yes. you so much. Clearly. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Salamat pagi, Maranata Christian University. It's actually a pleasure to be um, one of your lecturers for today's activity. Of course, um, I would like to acknowledge uh, Madam Tria for this invitation and also to my uh, colleague from the University of St. Lasalle, Doc uh, Sheila who is actually instrumental in this uh, invitation. And uh, I see some uh, colleagues also from University of St. LaSalle and uh, some students. So, Mayong Aga, good morning, everyone. Um, it's been raining here in Baholod City because of uh, the super typhoon. But uh, we're just thankful that... Uh, that uh, um, we're, uh, that, that our province is uh, actually quite far from, from the typhoon which is, uh, which is hitting uh, the Luzon uh, provinces. So let me present to you uh, the SME development here in the Philippines. Um, by the way, um, thank you also, Sir Deris. And um, Good morning to the administration of uh, Maranata Christian University and uh, to all uh, participants who are watching right now. Okay, um, let me give you the overview of the Philippine uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises. The Philippine micro, small, and medium enterprises are categorized based on the asset size, excluding the value of land and the number of employees 
is actually based on the, the Magna Carta for small and medium enterprises or the Republic Act number 6977. And um, the enterprises here are categorized as follows, micro, meaning to say if your asset size is up to 3 million, then you're considered as micro enterprise. Small, uh, more than 3 million to 15 million, and medium 15, more than 15 million to 100 million. Take note that um, I stated here the value of uh, uh, Philippine peso to Indonesian Pia. So the values he, that I presented here are actually in uh, Philippine peso. Now, in the 2021 report of the Philippine Statistics Authority, there are a total of 1,080,810 business enterprises operating in the country. Of this, 99.58% are micro, small, and medium enterprises, and 0.42% are large enterprises. Micro enterprises constitute 90.54% of total SMEs establishment, followed by small enterprises at 8.63% and medium enterprises at 0.41%. Together, these micro, small, and medium enterprises generated a total of 5,461,731 jobs, or 64.67% of the country's total employment. The micro enterprises produce the biggest share, closely followed by small enterprises, while medium enterprises were far behind at 7.12%. Meanwhile, large enterprises generated a total of 2,983,847 jobs, or 35.33% of the country's overall employment. Majority of the micro, small, and medium enterprises can be found in the national capital region, where um, the capital, Manila City, is located, then uh, followed by Region 4A, um, Region 3, then Region 7, which is the Central Visayas, and then uh, Region 6, where uh, Baholut City is located, um, with 73,515. And these top five uh, locations accounted for about 60.11% of the total number of SMEs established in the country. Regional concentration of SMEs is largely associated with economic activity and population size. By the way, um, if you're familiar with, if you're not familiar with uh, our country, um, and there are actually uh, 17 regions and every region, it has some uh, provinces uh, that belong to it. So the top five industry sectors, according to the number of SMEs in 2021, were wholesale and retail trade, accommodation and food service activities, manufacturing and other service activities, and financial and insurance activities. These industries accounted for about 87.4% of the total number of SMEs establishment. To give you a general overview of the SME contribution to the Philippines economy, the SME sector has generated a total of 5,461 jobs in 2021 versus 2,983,847 for the large enterprises. This indicates that SMEs contributed almost 64.67% of the total jobs generated by all types of business establishments in 2021. And in terms of value added, the SME sector contributed 35.7% of the total with manufacturing contributing the largest share of 6.8%. Wholesale and retail trade and repair contributed 6.58% followed by financial intermedi intermediation with a share of 6%. Within the sector, Small enterprises accounted for the largest share of 20.5%, medium enterprises of 10.3%, while micro enterprises registered a share of 4.9%. Among small enterprises, 
wholesale and um, retail trade and repair contributed the most with a share of 4.07%, followed by manufacturing with a share of 3.82%, while financial intermediation was next with a share of 3.35%. Now, what are the DTI, micro, small, and medium enterprises programs that could be availed um, by, by the citizens? On April 4, 2018, the Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises Development Plan 2017 to 2022, which was approved by then President Rodrigo Duterte through issuing Executive Order Number 50, directing concerned government agencies and instrumentalities like government owned and controlled corporations to adopt and implement the plan. With the approval of the Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises development plan, the committees are reviewing the government-wide initiatives, programs according to how it relates to the achievement of the five strategic goals, which are improve business climate, improve access to finance, enhance management and labor capacities, improve access to technology and innovation, and improve access to markets. To address the challenges and needs of the micro, small, and medium enterprises sector, the Department of Trade and Industry Regional Operations has been adopting the seven M's for micro, small, and medium enterprises development, which highlights holistic strategy for specific and targeted interventions for our MSMEs, comprised of mindset, mentoring, mastery, money, machines, markets, and models of business. The SME Development Plan 2017 to 2022 is supported by the department's framework on 7M's way of uplifting the SMEs. This is aimed at helping SMEs set up business and be smarter entrepreneurs. It can also help in making a difference to a larger cost of sustaining the Filipino entrepreneurial mindset. The seven M's will ensure that entrepreneurs and enablers can transfer themselves to meet the goals of the SME development plan. Now let's go to the strategic goal one, which is actually improve uh, business climate. The SMED plan strategic one, on improving the business climate will focus on mindset change, specifically of the government mindset. Mindset change is the starting point in building the right enabling environment for micro, small, and medium enterprises. This means that government should strengthen its coordination and collaboration to overcome turf and silo mentality. By changing our mindset, we help micro, small, and medium enterprises to embrace the right and positive entrepreneurial attitude that will carry them through their vibrant, vibrant entrepreneurial journey. And uh, these are the laws that are being implemented by the Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises Development Council and other concerned agencies for the development of Filipino entrepreneurs. Um, one, of course, the Republic Act 9501 or the Magna Carta for small and medium enterprises. We also have here the Republic Act 9178 or the Ma Barangay Micro Business uh, Act of, uh, 20, of 2002. We also have Republic Act 10644 or the Go Negocio Act, Republic Act 10679 or Youth Entrepreneurship Act. Republic Act 11032, Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Government Service Delivery Act. With the passage of the Ease of Doing Business Law, the business one-stop shop will be established by local government units. BOSS is a single common site or location or a single online website or portal that will provide a one-stop shop business facilitation service for the city or municipalities business permitting and licensing system. SMEs will benefit greatly from the EODB law because of the requirements for the issuance of permits will soon be decreased and the processing time 
will be shorter. It might even be possible that there will be one permit needed per business in the future. Currently, the Department of Trade Industry is implementing the Go Negotio Acts, which mandates the establishment of negotio centers in all provinces and cities and municipalities nationwide. The negotio centers become the face of the Department of Trade and Industry in every city and municipality. The negotio center promotes ease of doing business and facilitates access to services to micro, small, and medium enterprises, which include business registration assistance, business advisory services, business information and advocacy, and monitoring and evaluation. The Barangay Micro Business Enterprises Act of 2002, um, which is actually amended by Republic Act 10644, encourages the formation and growth of the barangay or micro enterprises by granting them incentives and other benefits. The major benefits that BMBS will receive under the acts are income tax exemption from income arising from the operations of the enterprises, exemption from the coverage of the minimum wage law, and a priority to special windows set up specifically for the financing requirements of the micro enterprises, and technology transfer, production and management training, and marketing assistance for micro entrepreneurs. The DTI provides business development services through negotiation centers established in provinces, cities, and municipalities pursuant to the Go Negotio Acts and uh, in partnership with national government agencies, local government units, the academe, non-government agencies, and private sectors. Negotiation centers promote ease of doing business and provide access to developmental services for SMEs through business counselors in their area of responsibility. Negotiation service, Servicio sa Barangay, or um, this is actually a Tagalog term, no? uh, Tagalog word, uh, which actually means um, business service for villages, will allow for an uh, even wider reach of business development services through partnership between local officials and negotiation center coordinators. Now let's go to uh, the second M, which is actually money, or which is the strategic goal is to improve uh, access to finance. With money, which falls under the strategic goal two, or improve access to finance of the plan, we give the micro, small, and medium enterprises access to financing, both from government and private financing institutions for setting up or expanding their businesses. We shall give alternative sources of financing for startup and expanding the micro, small, and medium enterprise that are easy to access and available at reasonable cost. Now, we have here one uh, financing program which uh, the government is extending to entrepreneurs. This is what we call the Pondo sa Pagbabago at pag -asenso. or in English, this is actually Fund for Development and Progress is a microfinancing initiative designed to bring down the interest rate and replace the usurious microfinance scheme by private lenders that is made available to microenterprises. The P3 program will be lent out to the business centers of poorest provinces based on poverty incidents, where the participating microfinance institutions and the small business corporation respectively can operate. Other priority beneficiaries include micro enterprises and entrepreneurs that do not have access to credit or access at a very high cost, which includes market vendors, agribusinessmen, and members of cooperatives, industry associations, and cooperators. Also, uh, we have the Bayanian years, especially during the time of uh, uh, pandemic. And then also we do have what we, uh, we call um, heroes or helping the economy recover through uh, overseas Filipino workers, enterprise startups. You know that we've been um, 
um, there are millions of OEF uh, overseas Filipino workers, and uh, we want to, to assist them also, especially when they uh, go home. No? We provide an opportunity for displaced, repatriated, or returning OFWs to rebuild their lives here in the Philippines by helping them establish their startup businesses. And also, uh, since uh, tourism is badly affected also by the pandemic, then there's also uh, another program that we have for them. Uh, this is what we call CARES for Travel. Tourism engaged micro, small, and medium enterprises will have access to zero interest, no collateral loans. The borrower, micro, small, and medium enterprises will only need to pay a one-time service charge with a set at a maximum of 8% for our four-year long term. Section 15 of uh, the Republic Act 6977, as amended by Republic Acts number 8289 and Republic Acts 9501, or the Magna Carta for SMEs, uh, stipulates that um, whether public or private uh, financial, financial institution, all public or private shall set aside a proportion of their total loan portfolio for SME credit for the period of 10 years from the date of the effectivity of Republic Act 9501. So at least 2% for medium enterprises and at least 8% for micro and small enterprises. For strategic goal three, which is actually the mindset, mastery and the mentoring uh, to improve management and labor capacities, uh, we help micro, small, and medium enterprises to embrace the right and positive entrepreneurial attitude that will carry them through their vibrant entrepreneurial journey. With mastery, we teach entrepreneurs to master the knowledge and how-tos of entrepreneurship. Through mentoring, we provide SMEs with continuous guidance and partnership with the private sector. Um, we have one program, which is actually what we call the, the Capitid Mentor Me. This is an initiative of the Department of Trade and Industry and the Philippine Center for Entrepreneurship to help countries, micro and small enterprises uh, through three key components. And what are these? Of course, um, one is the Mentor Me program, a coaching and the mentoring approach where large corporations teach um, micro small enterprises on different aspects of business operations. And then another one, the Adopt and a Shared Service Facility Program, which aims to help micro entrepreneurs by providing them access to SSFs on their, um, on their in their community. And uh, lastly, uh, the inclusive business model where micro small enterprises are linked into large companies value chains. Through the key MME um, program, we want to be able to reach and help more than thousand of micro small and medium enterprises from different and far flung areas to become smarter entrepreneurs and ignite the entrepreneurial spirit of every Filipinos. By the way, kapatid, uh, this is uh, in English, this is means uh, brother. As a nation with a vastly young population, the Department of Trade and Industry has prioritized the implementation of the Youth Entrepreneurship Acts, which aims to promote sustained development of young Filipinos whose aptitude and skill in the field of finance and entrepreneurship shall be encouraged and honed through education and specialized training programs. So that's why in uh, 2018, the DPI launched the Youth Entrepreneurship Program or what we call the YEP, which is actually a comprehensive package of interventions to help and encourage young Filipinos to develop their entrepreneurial skills. And its official tagline is actually harnessing our own resources for the advancement of the youth or hooray. And then through the livelihood seeding program, the Department of Trade and Industry provided startup capital 
in the form of livelihood starter kits and basic entrepreneurship and basic management training to micro small entrepreneurs in vulnerable areas such as those affected by disasters, calamities, and crises. In July 2016, the DTI spearheaded the creation of a public-private partnership and strengthening disaster resilience among micro, small, and medium enterprises. This initiative has engaged various stakeholders in the development and implementation of policies, strategies, programs, and activities necessary to carry out a roadmap for SME disaster resilience which will institutional, institutionalize a uh, mechanism for helping micro, small, and medium enterprises prepare for and recover from disasters. And um, the ASEAN SME Academy is an ASEAN project that is currently administered by the Philippines. The, the Academy is a one-stop multi-platform online learning information resource for Southeast Asian small and medium enterprises with support from USAID. Uh, ASEAN and the U.S. ASEAN Business Alliance. At present, uh, there are around 50 training courses on finance, management, marketing, operation, technology, and logistics contributed to Baker and McKenzie, Facebook, Google, um, Yolet Packard, MasterCard, Microsoft, PayPal, uh, Procter & Gamble, and the uh, International Labor Organization. So probably, um, our students here from La Salle or even from our or, uh, from Maranata Christian University will also avail of um, the courses that are being offered by the ASEAN, ASEAN SME Academy. Uh, and, uh, Tupas, uh, sorry for the interrupting. Uh, your time is only for uh, five minutes. Oh, okay, yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Okay. And yeah, then thank also you, Mr. Topaz. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we also um, implementing what we call the um, the uh, Great Women Project. This is intended to capacitate, uh, capacitate our women entrepreneurs. And then, uh, yeah, um, a collective push for women business to enter global markets. And then um, in coordination with the um, Technical Educational Skills Development Authority, we are implementing um, or promoting entrepreneurship program or what we call the STEEP. And um, some other programs that we are implementing, the um, Productivity Toolbox, which features the different um, productivity training programs and technical assistance to improve the capability and motivation of enterprises to adapt technology and for continuous improvement toward enterprise development and growth. Of course, under the Machines and Models of Business, uh, we are um, extending uh, machineries and equipment to entrepreneurs through our shared service facilities program. And uh, DTI um, has uh, offered, has offered um, fabrication laboratories also by micro entrepreneurs and even to small entrepreneurs. And then um, at the height of the community quarantine in April, BISMED consolidated online tools to help micro enterprises embrace the digital economy. So that's why we implemented these tech tools for micro, small, and medium enterprises. And um, we are focusing on the priority industry clusters um, at the DTI, high value cocoa products, rubber, co uh, coffee, cacao, processed fruits and nuts, wearables and other sales, palm oil and bamboo. So this is again, another project of the DTI for the Innovation Center, One Lab. And um, of course, uh, we want to improve the access to market. That's why we're implementing the one town, one product, which is actually to generate, uh, to promote entrepreneurship and create jobs. Uh, these are the products that uh, we, we had assisted uh, before and after, just to give you a glimpse of what we're doing, especially in, in terms of product development. We're implementing the Go Local. This is actually a retail concept store showcasing quality, innovative products crafted. And uh, other uh, international trade fairs, so we encourage our entrepreneurs to participate in order to showcase also their products. And for exporters, we're implementing the regional interactive platform for Philippine Exporters Plus. So that ends my presentation. Uh, terima kasih. Salamat gid. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. This is my contact information. Thank you and uh, good morning. 
Thank you, Mr. Kepas, for the great uh, uh, your, uh, your, your session. I will uh, have a, a summary from your uh, our conclusion from your uh, presentation. Okay, so uh, I will uh, deliver it in English and in English. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, micro, small, medium enterprises or SMM and SMEs in uh, the Philippines also have uh, three categories, which is uh, micro, small, and medium, but has a different classification range uh, in Indonesia. And we also have a similar amount of uh, MSMEs. In Indonesia, uh, also almost 90% classified as a micro enterprises. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, untuk, uh, pelaku usaha uh, UMKM yang ada di Filipina juga memiliki tiga kategori yaitu mikro, kecil, dan menengah namun memiliki uh, klasifikasi yang berbeda antara Indonesia dan Filipina uh, kita juga uh, di sini memiliki uh, jumlah uh, UMKM yang hampir mirip dengan yang ada di Filipina yaitu di Indonesia itu hampir 90%-nya terklasifikasi sebagai uh, usaha mikro in Philippines uh, they, they have a Republic Act or maybe in Indonesia we call it undang-undang uh, the Philippine government also protect their uh, small and medium enterprises to sustain in every situation jadi di Indonesia kita memiliki undang-undang dan di Filipina namanya uh, Republic Act dan uh, pemerintah Filipina juga melindungi Uh, UMKM yang mereka itu untuk bertahan di setiap situasi. MSME is in is help, uh, being helped to take a microfinance program from private and government uh, in Philippines, uh, also in Indonesia. Jadi Indonesia dan Filipina sama-sama uh, UMKM ini ditolong ya oleh program uh, microfinance. Ya, baik itu dari pemerintah maupun dari swasta. Not only Philippines and Indonesia, our regional area uh, and ASEAN also have a great program to protect our um, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Tidak hanya di Filipina dan Indonesia, uh, area regional kita yaitu ASEAN itu juga memiliki program yang uh, tidak kalah menariknya gitu, untuk melindungi. Uh, Uh, UMKM yang kita baik yang ada di Filipina maupun yang ada di Indonesia. And and is uh, Mr. Tupas have a lot of examples. Yeah, I cannot uh, state one by one. So many examples that what the private organization in Philippines uh, help the MSME in the Philippines. Okay, dan uh, yang terakhir adalah Mr. Tupas sudah berbagi berbagai contoh yang banyak contoh uh, dari Uh, organisasi uh, swasta yang di Filipina untuk membantu UMKM yang ada di Filipina. Oke, okay, uh, again, thank you for uh, Mr. Tupas. Uh, maybe we can give a uh, uh, what do we call a uh, 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 clap? Uh, yeah. Applause. <laughs> applause. Yeah, applause for uh, Mr. Tupas. Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Thank you, Mr. Santi. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Tukas. Uh, so, uh, okay, we are going. We will move to the third uh, session. Third session will be held by Ibu Susanti Sarani. Okay, I will read the uh, CV first. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ibu Susanti Ridawati Saragi, S A M S E. All we call her Ibu, Su Ibu Santi is a lecturer in Bachelor of Management, uh, Universitas Kesemarangan Bandung. She took her undergraduate program in management from Universitas Kesemarangan. She continued his Master of Science in Management at Universitas Gajah Mada Yogyakarta. 
She also took certificate uh, in early childhood education and care at PICCEG, uh, New Future uh, Training at Melbourne, Australia. She also took the uh, diploma in early childhood education and care at Susan Johnson, Melbourne, Australia. On top of that, she is uh, taking her PhD program at School of Business and Management at Institute Technology Bandung, or we call it IPB. And her co core competence, uh, whether in teaching and research, is in human resource management. In her spare time, uh, she loves traveling, reading, and joining community development. And on top of that, she loves begging. So we hope we can try her cake later. <laughs> Okay, uh, please welcome Ibu Santi. The screen is yours in about 40 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Surya, for introducing me to all the, the audience here. Uh, let me check first, am I am audible? Yes, we can hear okay, you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, before I will share my screen, I would like to say hi to Mr. Darius and also Mr. Tupas. Nice to meet you here. And very good morning for everyone here, for all the audience that attending this event. Please allow me to share my screen. Okay, uh, please let me know if you can see my screen right now, my PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Surya. Uh, during my presentation, please let me know if you can see my screen or if you can if you can hear my voice clearly, I might need to turn off my camera if it's uh, about the internet connection. Yeah, in this session, I would like to share about uh, how we can promote or how we can develop this and work for small, medium enterprises. Before, before uh, on the first session, Mr. Darius and also Mr. Tupas already shared about practical implication. It's more likely how the government regulation help the small, medium enterprise to help them to create and then uh, a decent word and also to more likely to help them to grow, particularly during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But in this session, I would like to give an explanation, a brief explanation about uh, specific about the decency of work, particularly in the small medium enterprise. My presentation will be divided into three sections. Uh, the first, I will give a brief explanation about what is this and work actually from the macro level and also from the psychological perspective. So uh, after that, I hope we can compare how with lenses can we use to uh, have a better view or not a better view to have a view about uh, this and work. And then I will continue with a brief explanation about what is the consequences of the digitalization uh, on the decency of work or the quality of work, particularly on small, medium enterprises or micro, small, medium enterprises. And then the last, uh, I will show you or we will discuss about the, some practical step on how to develop decent work for micro, small, and medium enterprises. So let's get started. This is the first one that I would like to share uh, for everyone here about the decent work concept from the macro level that has been over or explained by the International Labour Organization. So here, in if we if we have a look, uh, there are so many uh, documents and also research that over or conducted by ILO that they are stated how they want to promote or how they want uh, people or employee all over the world, they have opportunity, even though there's women and men to obtain a decent and productive work in condition of freedom, equity, security, and human dignity. So this concept is 
uh, over by ILO. And this is from the macro level perspective. So from this concept, uh, they offer so many indicators that can be used uh, by organization or company uh, all over the world to measure the decency of work at their workplace. And it uh, con consists of four pillars. The first is about right at words. Do the company have the standard of employment? So do they concern about the child labor? Do they concern about the non-discrimination and freedom of association? And then the second pillar is about the employment creation. Yes, we know that small medium enterprise, they uh, give a bigger opportunity for us, for people to have work. But uh, however, sometimes because they also have a limitation, sometimes the policy also don't over a stable employment or uh, in terms of the fair wage, they might have uh, limitation to, to get to the standard. And then the third is about the social protection. This is about the policy that related on how uh, employ how employer concern about people well-being and also the community and then the last is about the social dialogue this is more likely about how the employer uh, government and also the worker have a have a social dialogue so each party that have that have things uh, to obtain can be can be negotiated through a good social dialogue. So this is the decent work from the micro level. They have uh, so many indicators. And then the previous literature also say that sometimes, sometimes we can use the same indicator because all countries have a different uh, economic situation, political situation, human development index that different. So sometimes it's also hard to put the the same indicator and it apply to all the country. So this is the interesting thing that I want to share that literature also uh, help us to understand a uh, decent work from different lens. This is what I call as a psychological perspective. And this is over by Bluestein in 2016 and also Duffy in 2016. I won't explain about this model, but I want us to uh, switch a little bit to see what is this in the work, not only from the macro level or macro perspective, but also from individual perspective, from the psychological perspective. So Bluestein and Duffy, they, uh, they stated that Decency of work should be measured not from the macro level, not from the country level, but it should be measured from individual experiences at work. So that's why in this model, Bluestein and Duffy put decent work in the middle. And then according to them, when organization promote decent work, it will give a positive outcomes a positive work environment because decency of work, decent work will fulfill three human basic needs. So this is quite different from the macro level that most likely associate with the uh, economic growth or uh, employment rate. And here from the psychological perspective, they want to see that decent work will uh, evict individually group and also community and organization. So it, this is quite different, but we can see these two lens to understand what is this new work. Yeah, so I hope uh, this can give us a new insight to see this new work, not just from the macro level, but actually we can understand them by viewing them from bottom up, from the employee's perspective, from psychological perspective. In this model, Dustin and Duffy have five indicators. So what is decent work according to them? They said that they have five indicators. 
that we can use as a measurement of decency of work. The first is physical working condition. The second is working hour. The third is organizational value, whether it's conflicting or is aligned with social value. The fourth is adequate compensation. And then the last is access to adequate health care. So this is the indicator from the psychological perspective. Uh, after we have uh, insight or after we have uh, a new perspective of this and work, I would like to explain uh, what is actually wh why why we have to concern about this and work. If we are the business owner, particularly for small medium enterprise, why we have to concern about the decent work, particularly in the digitalization era. So here in the second uh, section, I would like to give a brief explanation how the quality of work, how the decent And then here, Hicks in 2017 explained that to understand why the decency of work getting lower in a digital era from three contexts. The first is from employment context. Yeah, we know that uh, digitalization has opened up so many opportunities for us to get more work. For example, probably uh, I work as a full-time lecturer here, but sometimes I also able to get some project outside from my university because I don't have to go to work there. I can do all my work virtually and then, yeah, it's open up new opportunity. But but sometimes we we don't think that in a, in a long term, this actually reduce the decency of work because we might need to work in a longer hour or actually we work uh, project based we, we do some project based and then we don't get a, a formal employment we just get paid hourly and sometimes they think that because this is a macro task that can be shared virtually so you you, you shouldn't get uh, a high pay but yeah lower pay so sometimes it's happened because of digitalization. Uh, on the right side on your screen, you can see here, this is the Gojek. It is the, like a Uber drive in Indonesia, very common. And then this is very popular. I think now the business, uh, how people sometimes they, uh, they are, they work full time from eight to four. And then after five o'clock, they, do this job as a Uber a Gojek driver, some things like that. It's it's happened. It's happened, and it is possible because yeah, because of the digitalization, it's make it possible. But but the decency of work, but the quality of work is getting lower. People only get the benefit from what they do, but they don't have the holistic or the formal employment. And this is lower the decency. For example, uh, from from my observation from the from my neighborhood, they have a, like a expedition uh, business. So we can we can I I can notice actually uh, in the morning the the courier that that come and to pick up the the boxes, they don't have they don't have a proper workstation they don't have a proper table to check all the all the stuff they don't have a proper equipment and then sometimes it's not sometimes but even they deliver the stuff with their own vehicle or motorcycle which is we don't know whether like the insurance we don't know uh if the if the company has checked all the the motorcycle, we don't know. So it is lower. It's lower, lower the quality of work here. So here, Hicks in 2017 have give us a brief explanation about the context why the quality of work is getting lower in the digital era. And this is the fact 
from Indonesia. This is about the employment. This is about the this is about the access to healthcare. Yeah, this is from BPJS employment in 2021, and only 162 driver online driver register as social security by themselves. So not from the from not from the company because they are not they are not count as worker they count as partner that's why whenever they get order they don't own the whole uh revenue they share they share with the company around 10 to 30 percent we can see here even for the for the health insurance they have to pay by themselves and only 153 uh, Gojek driver and Grab driver, they are only able to bear the cost of the two minimum protection. This is a very uh, standard. And then, well, this is this is happened. This is the fact from uh, the data. So, how about the small medium enterprise? What happened? Digitalization, I think, is all come uh, not just for us in education, small middle is all over the world for the business. It has changed the way we work, the way we study and everything. So after that, we can see here that how decency of work for small, small medium enterprise also getting treated. The first is precarious work. Why? Why this is happen? We know that small medium enterprise uh, enterprises has limitation access uh, to get capital and then sometimes it's also treating them to hire a lot of professional worker and then sometimes it makes them have to work in a non-standard work for example uh, they work as a part-time or a casual work or project based and then it gives them insecurity at, at work they don't know like how how long they can do this job and then they don't know like how many months how the contract will last or how will contract will end uh, something like that and then this is this has become a serious concern for the business owner particularly for small medium enterprise and then they get paid uh, lower compared to other other people in the same quality of uh, competence. And then, yeah, like, I, like what I mentioned before, sometimes they don't have a proper working condition, uh, very basic and also um, don't think about the ergonomy and something like that. The second is about the social security. Yeah, this, this is very basic and, uh, the, the company or the business owner might don't think for a longer term to help them to provide uh, health care for the employee. And then because normally because they are in a smaller group, sometimes they are excluded from the uh, union or employee association. And the last point is about the work-life balance. Because small medium enterprise not all, but most likely they don't have a, like a very regular uh, business operation. And then sometimes people that work with them have to work in an excessive hours of work. So maybe on Saturday or weekend, they have to go to work or they have to work overnight, something like that. So this is the situation Um of a decency of work in small and medium enterprises, not just because of the characteristic as a small and medium enterprises, but because of the how digitalization affects them in the ways of working. So the last question is, so how? So how to develop decent work for the small and medium enterprises? There are five uh, practical steps that I will explain here. The first is promotion of social dialogue and workplace cooperation. Let's jump to the first point. This is the first point. Promotion of social dialogue 
and workplace cooperation. This is about the ability of the business owner to create a culture of open and proactive communication. Okay. Before that, I would like to I would like everyone here to flashback a little bit from my uh, first explanation about decent work. So decent work can be viewed as a macro level that will involve government regulation, but it also can be viewed as a as a business owner for the small medium enterprise. What we can do here. So this first step can be applied, can be applied uh, to small medium enterprise. The first, we have to take a responsibility to create a culture of open and proactive communication. How? First, we have to develop employees' capability and competencies. As I mentioned before, sometimes in small medium enterprise, they don't have a lot of professional or um, a good employee employee to work with. They just sometimes they just do and finish the work, and uh, without participating in the process, they just finish accomplish one task to other task, but they don't participate. They don't give idea. They don't um involve in a in a process. So here. The way we promote decent work is by creating a culture of open communication. We have to engage them in the internal concern, but also how the as a business owner as well, they have to open a dialogue with the trade union and employer association. So this is the first step that we can apply, that we can we can do as a as a business owner or a, in a small medium enterprise to promote a social dialogue and workplace cooperation. The second is development of skill and employability. This is about the ability of the business owner to integrate human resources development in business strategy. So whatever the business strategy is, for example, if the business strategy is about the innovation, it means that the human resources management development should be focused on the training, should be focused on lifelong learning. If the business strategy is about the efficiency or about the low cost strategy. So the human resources development should be focused on technology to get more efficient work. They have to more focus on how people work like in a smaller number, but they can work more than before. So we have to, we have to integrate the human resource development into the business strategy, whatever your business strategy is. And then uh, we can also encourage them to develop their skill, uh, not just by investing in the training, but also encourage them to perform a diverse task, like a different task regularly. This is the third point, creating a safe working environment. This is not only how the business owner or small medium enterprise meet basic human requirements but it also provides a conducive to productive and quality of work. I think this is very uh, common, yeah? If we go to the building, a public building, we can see the sign, exit, uh, enter, and then emergency, and then fire. Uh, uh, we, we can see all the signs easily. But however, sometimes in small medium enterprise, this is not, this is not a big concern. So they just focus on how the business can run regularly. They are not, maybe not really focused on how to create a safe working environment. Here on the left side on your screen, we can see this is very, very basic, how we should concern and prevent all the hazard here 
from the tip over or wet floor or uh, lifting heavy, lifting heavy stuff, something like that. So if we are asking the same question, how we can create a decent world for small medium enterprise, this is also the point. We have to develop, not just develop, but implement a policy and program to ensure safe environment. Let me share a bit my experience about this point. Uh, I think it's around around 2017. Yeah, I work in, in the garden in Melbourne, Australia. And then you can imagine how kindergarten will look like. Yeah, after the children all get picked up, we can see sometimes the room, the classroom is in a mess. The toys sometimes all over the, the floor and then after the children get picked up. So that's our turn. The educator turn to pick up all the toys and put them back on the shelf. So what did I do at that time? Yeah, Let's see on your screen here, the boy is hand uh, holding a pickup stick, a pickup stick, yeah? This is, this is not from my kindergarten actually, this is from, from YouTube, yeah, the picture. So at the time, I haven't seen this stuff before in Indonesia, honestly. <laughs> I haven't seen these this, this things, yeah? So every, every day after it's clean, if it's clean up time, I just bend down, pick up all the toys or the, the stuff on the floor and then put them back on the shelf. A little bit bend down, because I have to pick up the things from the floor and put them back on the shelf. Uh, after that time, my, my, my colleagues from the same room told me that don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I think, oh, why? This is quite easy. Just pick up the toys from the floor and then put them back on the shelf. They said, it's will hurting your back. It's will hurting your back. And I think, what? pick up things will hurting my back. <laughs> this is easy. This is not like a heavy boxes. This is just toys. But for them, if this is your main job, if this is regularly that something that you will need to do every day in a longer term, this will hurt your back. So, and then she showed me um, on, on the shelf that actually they provide that pick up stick and all has name on it. So I, I have my own actually, but I, I never know about this before. And then after that, how I pick up the toys on the floor is not, I don't need to bend down anymore, but I have the proper equipment to help me to finish my job. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very, very simple, very simple example, but sometimes people don't think about this. We can imagine how people that need to lift uh, heavy boxes every day to accomplish their job. Just meet the basic requirement, but how it also helps to, uh, so employee can work more productive and enhance the quality of work. This is, the next point about how we can create a decency of work for small medium enterprise by ensuring equality of treatment and non-discrimination. I'm happy to hear that Mr. Tupas and also Mr. Darius explained about the program that involves youth entrepreneurship, women entrepreneurship, and then this is actually the real, um, the real implication how we ensure the equality of treatment and we we don't we don't only focus on a certain group but we also involve them like different background different gender different class we involve them in a small medium enterprise and also we might to think more about how we can open an opportunity for disabled people. Yeah, so I'm happy to hear that Indonesia, Philippines also more, more getting there, yeah, more focused on how to help from a diverse, uh, diverse uh, background. And this is the last 
is that the last? <laughs> is it improving general condition of work? So this is about how the business owner focus on work design, uh, about the working time arrangement, the day off or leave, how many leaves that they have. Yeah, maybe probably for small, medium enterprises, they don't think that employee, they, 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 they deserve that yeah, compared to the big company. But this actually what they need. And then here, from the decent work perspective, all, all the employment regulation, all the employment should, should comply with national labor regulation. So we can we have to we have to see them even though they are small medium enterprise and this is a big company, all the employee there, they have the same right to get a good condition of work to have a good or a balanced working life arrangement. Okay, this is a success story. So this is real, yeah, not, <laughs> not, not, um, not fictive. This is, this is the real story. This is from Indonesia, PT Laksana Technik Makmur. They got, a, um, they joined the program from, from ILO that we know as ILO score. So this is an auto part and let me check, car accessories company in Jakarta. And then after they join ILO score program to help them to promote and provide this and work, this is happened. The first management and employee have a better communication. They have a trust between them and they have an open uh, communication. The second, employees work faster because they, they try to analyze what to actually the employee for all the plan need. And then this has boosted their productivity. And the last, they found that it's lower injuries. The uh, employee feel that they they are now in a safe working environment and then all the working spaces are tidy and clean. So this is the success story. It means that if if one or two um, company can achieve, can promote a decent work, I believe all of us here or uh, the business owner from the small medium enterprise can do it as well. Remember, this new world is not just about the macro level. We can be proactive by doing something, promote a decent work from an individual or from the psychological perspective. So this is the conclusion for today. The first digitalization has threatened the decency of work particularly for the small medium enterprise. Yes, they are flexible, but they are also vulnerable. They are facing challenges in promoting decent work. But this uh, small medium enterprise as well have an opportunity to promote decent work by using different lenses. So instead of waiting for the government regulation from the macro level, small medium enterprises also still can keep doing promoting decent work by using a different lenses, HR arm perspective and psychological perspective. I have explained five practical steps and I hope people here, all of us here, maybe we are a lecturer, maybe we are a researcher or maybe we are the business owner, let's work together to promote decent work through our research, through our business, because when more people in decent work, it's mean stronger and more inclusive economic growth. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I will give the time next to Mr. Surya. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ibu Susanti, for your great uh presentation okay uh, i will uh, have a 
another yeah uh, let me uh, have a conclusion again <laughs> okay with Santi but uh, my version okay um yeah this one is very interesting because uh Ibu Santi has a uh, person tell us about the distant work or maybe in Indonesia we call it pekerjaan yang layak it's something that we want and we hope we can say whether we have a good uh, we have a good job with a good payment and also we have a quality time in workplace and also for the family. But uh, on the other hand, the technology uh, advancing very quickly nowadays and digitalization make a business more efficient and effective, but digitalization also threat the decent, decency of work. Ya, jadi uh, maybe in Indonesia uh, I can say that pekerjaan yang layak itu kan sesuatu yang sangat kita inginkan dan sangat kita harapkan dan uh, pekerjaan yang layak itu nanti kan uh, akan me mencerminkan juga pekerjaan yang apa ya uh, baik uh, dengan pembayaran yang baik juga dan juga uh, memiliki kualitas waktu baik itu dalam pekerjaan maupun dalam uh, kehidupan sehari-hari. Nah, walaupun teknologi, uh, tapi di satu sisi teknologi juga uh, berkembang dengan sangat cepat dan digitalisasi juga membuat bisnis itu menjadi lebih uh, efisien dan lebih efektif. Namun digitalisasi ini juga uh, mengancam uh, kelayakan dalam bekerja. Ya. Uh, and uh, Ibu Susanti also uh, state the, the five practical steps of uh, Indonesia ada lima langkah praktis ya, dalam uh, desain work ini. Yang the first one is about the promotion of the social dialogue and workplace cooperation. In Indonesia we call it meningkatkan dialog sosial dan kerjasama di tempat kerja. Second one is development of skill and employability. In Indonesia, we can say pengembangan keterampilan dan kemampuan bekerja. The third one is the creating a safe working environment. Atau, or in Indonesia, we call it menciptakan lingkungan kerja yang aman. Next is the ensuring equality of treatment and non-discrimination. In Indonesia, I can say, uh, memastikan kesetaraan perlakuan di dalam tempat, ke, uh, tempat bekerja dan memastikan tidak adanya diskriminasi. And the last one is improving general condition of work, memperbaiki kondisi kerja secara umum. And the last one, I really agree with uh, Ibu Susanti. Uh, she said that more people in decent jobs means stronger and more inclusive economic growth. So maybe in Indonesia, uh, can say lebih banyak orang yang uh, bekerja yang layak itu berarti memiliki pertumbuhan ekonomi yang lebih kuat dan lebih um, inklusif lagi. Okay, uh, the third session is finished, so uh, we can give a pause to Ibu Susanti. Thank you, Ibu Susanti. Okay, next one we have a question and answer and uh, also discussion session. Okay, maybe uh, our students or maybe lecturers from um, uh, Indonesia and Philippines can uh, make a question from the chat uh, box. Maybe you can uh, state also your uh, from uh, where which university and what is your question and delivered to who? Okay, maybe, uh, well, we were waiting for the questions from uh, our uh, students, our lecturer. Maybe I will, uh, I want to ask to uh, Ms. Uh, Ibu Susanti, Ibu Susanti, uh, yeah, about this and work is very interesting, isn't it? Uh, I'd like to know about um, what should we, uh, what should uh, maybe the employee, employee 
uh, do to make uh, this stand work uh, maybe uh, getting better? Uh, you said is uh, the uh, your presentation is from uh, uh, SME's uh, perspective, but how about from uh, uh, from employer? Maybe from the uh, SME employer to make a decent work. Okay, thank you, Mr. Surya, for the question. Do you mean the employer, the business owner, the management, or from from the employee itself? From employee. From the employee. Okay. Yes. So basically, decent decent work sometimes it's given. It's given from the workplace. So that's why, that's why why international labor organization promote this because as an employee, sometimes we don't have power to create a decent work. And then we only hope that the management will provide them for us. So we have a better quality of life and working life. So if you ask me what the employee from the employee perspective, maybe, the, the the very basic step that can they do is to raise their voice to uh, open up their aspiration for the management about their feeling their experience of, of doing their work for example um in my observation at that time for the expedition uh, company the courier only do and check all the heavy heavy boxes they, they don't have a proper proper equipment to move all the heavy equipment to the motor motor motorcycle and then they don't have it they only carry it by themselves so i think the basic the very basic that they can do is to raise voice to uh give aspiration for the management because yeah that's it give this is what is sometimes is given given from the management maybe that's my explanation mr surya thank you Thank you, uh, Ibu Susanti. Maybe uh, you have said also that uh, we have uh, uh, a good communication is very important okay, well, between the employee and employers. So what uh, the employee want uh, can be delivered uh, 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 to the employer. Yeah, that, that's right, Mr. Surya. Maybe if we can... In our daily life, we can check actually for the restaurant or for the cafe. Sometimes in the kitchen, they don't have a, a temperature measurement. Yeah. So sometimes people don't uh, think that this is actually very important that the kitchen temperature should be in a standard level. Yeah. They have to be get access with the window, open window to help them, you know, to bread. <laughs> nicely not in like a like in a, we live in the oven <laughs> yeah this is this is a just small example actually thank you Ibu Susanti. maybe for the uh, Pak Surya saya boleh bertanya yeah. okay Pak Leris <laughs> <laughs> ini presentasi Ibu Susan sangat menarik nih selamat siang Bu Susan selamat siang Pak Dery, so ini bertanya ke saya Pak. Iya, nggak apa-apa ya Bu ya. Oh, gitu. Kita kita Boleh, sharing kita juga nih Bu. Pak. Uh, mungkin uh, biar biar Mister Topas juga ini saya coba uh, dalam bahasa Inggris mungkin ya. Jadi uh, many entrepreneurs, uh, especially of uh, micro, that uh, they are typical uh, very difficult to develop. Because we know that eighty-six uh, percent of them are female, and uh, with the arrangements, fifty-six uh, years old female. So they are given to direct. Uh, we uh, Happy Kindo has give uh, about uh, education and anything, but. They are very, very difficult. So maybe uh, Mr. Mrs. Susan have uh, to save uh, how to give direct and how to develop their business in more effective.
for uh, this problem maybe for me maybe this is uh, we are joined to Mr. Topaz uh, in Philippines uh, the same the same uh, with in West Java um yeah um here in the philippines we give equal opportunities for all so um yeah i, I really agree with you that uh, most of the micro enterprises are are managed by by women but um we cannot also discount that uh, there are also micro entrepreneurs or micro enterprises that are also uh, managed by men yeah. um well, um, here in the Philippines, um, um, as you can see, like like for example, for a small uh, retail stores, uh, these are are managed by women because most of the time men are working in the field or working in in, in offices, working in companies. So that's why um, most uh, women are tending to their um, enterprises. So that's uh, the reality here in, in our country. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally glad to hear that Philippines and Indonesia, they involve a woman in the small medium enterprises. And I think this is also a good step for, for our country to develop equal opportunity and also to lower the gender bias and then yeah because we know sometimes a female they have limitation to work as a professional because they have to uh they, they have a different role i mean like men as well as a, as a father but they they have a more responsibility and then sometimes they don't have chance to express themselves to develop themselves and then uh, program that over in Indonesia and Philippines, I think is is very good to help them. But if Mr. Dennis asked me how how to deal with them for the <laughs> female group, yeah, I know this is a very specific question, yeah, and I think this is more likely for a leadership leadership skill, yeah. yeah. And I I don't think I can answer by giving one uh, leadership style to answer all this problem, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we can we can see the problem for from different perspective that all the the female all the business owner in the small medium enterprise they have different needs. Yeah. Some of them have a willingness. Some of them have willingness to work, by, but they don't want to work. Mm -hmm. Some of them know how to work, but they don't know don't know how to work but they're willing to work and then this is happened the the four variation is is happening so we have to make a situational leadership to help yeah. them to uh to to know which one or oh, for people or for the business owner that do not know how to work but they have willingness to work maybe we have to help them direct we give a direct uh direct uh order something like that yeah like very direct so they know what should they know but if people they know how to work how to run the business but they don't want to do it maybe yeah. we can just supervise them because people that know people know something if we have a close supervision yeah <laughs> they, we can't control them so i think this is a very a brief uh, answer, uh, Pak Deris, to help uh, to help us how we can answer this uh, problem. So I, I don't think one leadership style will fit for all the problem. Yeah, sure. That's it, Pak Deris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope this can answer it. We, we want to give more attention for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, okay. the fact. Uh, sorry. Yes, please, Mr. Dupas. Uh, yeah, that's that's also the reason why we are implementing the Great Women Project uh, in order to capacitate and yeah. uh, empower women entrepreneurs. Uh, we all know that some of them uh, have do not uh, do not have formal uh, education with regards to money and enterprise. So that's uh, where the government comes um, 
into uh, capacitating them, empowering them, so to eventually become successful entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Susan, Mr. Paul. Okay, thank you for the great discussion. Uh, we have uh, one uh, participant from Sulu State College. Uh, this, uh, hello, Bu uh, Susanti Saragi. This is uh, Dr. Sherhan from uh, Sulu State College, Philippines. What is the primary goal to promote uh, opportunities for women and men uh, to obtain decent and productive uh, work in condition of freedom, equality, Equity, security, and human dignity. Okay, please, Bu Santi. We refer to the ILO document. Decent work for a longer term. So, decent work itself is not a goal but it will help us or the country to achieve sdgs but the question is how 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 to achieve them is uh, the the equality of work that can be obtained through a decent work so if the question is what's the primary goal, I think we have to refer to the main concept that over by ILO to promote the SDG in our country. I think that's it. So yeah, I hope this can answer your question, Dr. Serhan. Okay, thank you, Ibu uh, Santi. Okay, is there any more discussion from uh, Dr. Serhan, uh, Sulu State College, Philippine? Oh, uh, I said thank you. <laughs> okay, next one we have uh, Daniel Togu Halomani from uh, Maranatha Christian University. Okay, uh, Daniel, yeah, what, uh, please. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself. My name is Daniel Togu Halomwan. I am the one of uh, students in Maranatha Christian University, uh, especially in accounting major. I want to ask to Miss, Mrs. Santi and Mr. Tupas about the, <coughs> the standard of the SME. Any type of, <coughs> sorry, uh, I want to ask about the standard of the SME. Any type of standard in both countries about the quality of SME in company or business? Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for the question. Uh, I just want to make it clear for your question. Do you mean the standard, uh, the, the basic requirement, so they count as a small, medium enterprise? For example, how many employees? Or is there any standard that you refer in your question? Uh, uh, other standards than the basic standard means I think uh, I think the both countries have different standard. If any opinion from Mrs. Susanti and Mr. Tupas. Oh, okay. So you, okay. So you don't mean about the how many employee that we can count yes, or as I a don't requirement. Mean the how many. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, but I think yes, that's true. Every country has a different standard. Uh, to decide it, which one is the small medium enterprise, but more most likely, uh, if you mention about the decency of work here, the standard sometimes sometimes they why, why we we have a blur a blur view about the decency of work for small medium enterprise because they characteristic because they have lack of access for the capital, they have a smaller number of capital compared to the uh, big company. So that's why they don't follow the 
the straight line to promote the decency of work. But I think this question actually <laughs> more suitable for Pak Deris to explain ada nggak ya Pak ya the standard itu Pak untuk yang di small medium enterprise specifically for the business operation ya mungkin Pak ya tadi I have explained about the decent work ya mungkin seperti itu Iya betul Bu Bore dari segi oh. Pak Derisnya juga gimana di uh, standarnya itu apakah basic-basic aja ini saya ngomong pakai bahasa Indonesia supaya Pak Deris bisa mengerti ya Uh, ya maksudnya sama yang saya tahu kan SME-nya itu standarnya setiap perusahaan pasti beda mungkin apakah ada menurut Pak Deris ada yang berbeda gitu di setiap lingkungannya apa gimana Pak? Terima kasih Pak. Baik terima kasih uh, Pak Daniel. Secara gambaran dalam dunia bisnis khusus untuk pelaku dalam kriteria mikro, kecil, dan menengah sesuai dengan Undang-Undang PP 7 tahun 2021, kita memiliki standar dari segi permodalan, dari segi bisnis, itu ada standar. Pasti ada, apalagi dengan Undang-Undang Cipta Kerja sekarang sangat-sangat-sangat fokus kalau misalnya sekarang kita bisa lihat khususnya di KBLI, itu sangat fokus sekali. Jadi kalau dulu itu dalam dalam berbuat apa membuat satu perusahaan baik CV atau PT itu setelah global. Tapi sekarang sangat begitu. Jadi pemerintah memberikan satu program kekhususan, tetapi untuk perizinan dipermudah. Standarnya seperti apa? Nah, kita bisa lihat nanti seperti eh, pengurusan perizinan segala macam gitu kan. Jadi dalam artian bahwa semua proses pemerintah sudah memberikan satu gambaran secara nyata, secara real, bagaimana dalam eh, mengoperasikan satu perusahaan. Standarnya sudah ada, Bang Daniel, sudah ada. Oke, terima kasih Pak Deris. Uh, if any uh, opinion uh, from Mr. Tupas, I want to hear from Mr. Tupas. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, Daniel. Um, well, um, it really depends on what kind of enterprise you're engaging in. You know? Like um, here in the Philippines, you need to comply with uh, the government requirements uh, in order for you to start your own enterprise. So we need to say uh, you need to register with the Department of Trade and Industry uh, if you are a single proprietorship or from the Securities and Exchange Commission if you are operating as uh, a company or corporation. Then once you already have um, the DTI or the SEC registration, then you need to, to have a permit from from the local government unit. So I mean to say, you need to secure um, the mayor's permit. Now, um, once you already have your DTI and um, mayor's permit, you need to go to the Bureau of Internal Revenue to get your uh, tax identification number and um, other uh, or uh, value added tax number from, from the said agency. So once you secure it and um, you need to comply also some uh, requirements um, from, let's say, if you are into uh, food business or if you are, um, yeah, food business, then you need to secure license to operate from the Food and Drugs Authority. Um, if you are into, um, let's say, um, uh, engaging into activities that are related to the utilization of natural resources, then you need to comply um, uh, permits, you need to secure permits from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. So, um, outside from those uh, licenses and documentary requirements, uh, you need to have registration with the securities and uh, uh, social services um, system. You need uh, to have registration from the field health and other um, government agencies. Now, with regard to your operation, um, here in the Philippines, we have what we call the labor uh, code. 
which is actually uh, which stipulates the different standards uh, with regards to the welfare of the people. So like um, if you are in the construction business, you see to it that um, uh, as, as contractor, you're complying with the standards set by the law. So like uh, your workers should have um, protective gears every time they're working at the, the field or um, as contractor, you attended various seminars um, needed to, to, to operate your own construction business. Or uh, again, if you are into restaurants or food business, you should have license to operate from the Food and Drugs Authority and um, other requirements. So absence of those uh, uh, or government uh, requirements, then um, you'll be risking the operation of the enterprise because the government might be running after you. you know? um, what's the concern actually of the government is the protection of the people and at the same time protection for you as entrepreneur. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, how about uh, Daniel? Is there any questions? Uh, maybe uh, this is clear. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for Mrs. Santi, Mr. Tupas, and Paderis for the answer. Uh, I think it's enough, so I give it to, to Mr. Surya. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, thank Daniel. You. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, is there any questions from uh, the uh, participants from Indonesia and also from Philippines? Yeah, while we are waiting, maybe uh, there is a uh, Mr. Tupas. Uh, I just uh, uh, imagine that after this uh, meetings, uh, maybe uh, Indonesia and uh, Philippines can cooperate with each other to uh, develop our uh, micro, uh, small, and medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. Maybe is there any uh, idea from uh, maybe Pak Deris or maybe Mr. Tupas? Come again, sir. Come again. Sorry. Would you mind okay, to repeat uh, again on your question? Yeah. Uh, is there any idea uh, for uh, developing our uh, SMEs in, uh, from Indonesia and Philippines? Maybe uh, cooperate with uh, one of uh, each other from Philippines and Indonesia. Is there any idea? Well, uh, well, um, we belong to one. Uh, one regional group, which is actually ASEAN. And I understand, um, like, uh, Philippines is having uh, collaboration with um, other uh, ASEAN countries with regards to enterprise development. In fact, one of uh, the uh, project of the ASEAN is the uh, ASEAN um, SME Academy, wherein you can... Um, if you are an entrepreneur uh, coming from different uh, from from other countries within the ASEAN region, you can actually enroll um, via online, of course, in order for you to attend uh, entrepreneurial and managerial seminars. So even if the academy is based here in the Philippines, it's accessible to all entrepreneurs within the ASEAN region, and that's one collaboration that um, the Philippines is having with other um, ASEAN, uh, other uh, ASEAN countries. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tupas. Uh, how about uh, Pak Deris, is there any idea to make a good uh, cooperation between the uh, MSME in Indonesia and Philippines? Okay, thank you, Mr. Surya. Maybe uh, we are Hippikindo. Uh, strive to encourage MSMA to help us be motivated to uh, everyone 
and then uh, the first we interest to MOU with the Giam Song Bukdo province and Daegu City for the agriculture. And then the provincial government West Java also conduct to LOE and MOU with the several countries. Uh, and then the cooperation in education and training, one with uh, Maranatha University, thank you. And maybe the last with USLS University, Mr. Top Mr. Topaz, we have to uh, work together for to become the MSMA. And uh, we are cooperate for the opening, operate to another university. And for this time, uh, Ipikino will thanks uh, to give uh, this moment this webinar and we must to uh, education more more and more for the biggest MSMA in Indonesia and ASEAN. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maranata. Thank you, USLS University. Thank you, Madaris. Okay, is there any questions from the participants of Indonesia and uh, Philippines? You may raise your hand. Uh, or maybe uh, type your uh, questions in the chat box. Okay, uh, if there is no questions, maybe uh, our uh, last session, uh, question and answer and discussion session is uh, over, okay. Uh, thank you for uh, partners, Mr. Tupas, and Ibu Susanti for the wonderful session of discussion. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will see you again. Okay, I will give the time to our uh, MC. Okay, thank you so much for everyone here. And thank you so much for Mr. Surya for uh, become a director for the, <laughs> become a, Moderator for this event, thank you so much for our speakers, Mr. Deris, Mr. Tupas, and Mrs. Sustanti for giving us a lot of insight and knowledge for today. Okay, now we would like to invite all of the speakers and all of uh, the participants to um, turn on your camera because we are getting a picture together. So please turn on your camera and let me see your beautiful and handsome faces. So Daniel, you can please take a lead of this session. Terima kasih, everyone. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Harvey. Harvey, I want to, may I invite you all to open the camera? Uh, because we will have a photo session together. Okay, uh, in my screen, there are four slides. Uh, I will count one, two, three, and I will capture the slides. Uh, this is for the first slide, one, two, three. Okay, the second slide. One, two, three. The third slide. One, two, three. And the fourth slide. One, two, and three. Thank you, everyone. So, Karfi, uh, I, I will give you the session again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Before I close this event, it's better we close it with a prayer. Please, Mr. Nugraha Kalvin, I invite you to lead the close uh, prayer. Thank you, Ms. Arfi. Uh, dear audience, allow me to lead us in pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for we thank you for the things we lead, we learn from this session today. We also thanks to our speakers as our channel of wisdom and knowledge. 
May you continue to bless and guide us as we continue our activity and may the things we learn will remain in our heart and mind. Please help us become your worthy children to glorify you. Thank you for everything. We commit this prayer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you, Mr. Nugraha Tofin. So that means our event is done for today. If you want to watch this workshop again, you can go to Fakultas Business Maranatha YouTube channel. And I want to say thank you to Dr. Sally Chajera from USLS Bacolod, Philippines for your kind continue support for and thank you for everyone who joined this event from the beginning and do now thanks for all the committee who worked for this event and last word please don't forget to fill the form at the link at the chat box below and that's all for me have a good time and we will see you in another event later. Okay, bye. Thank you so bye. much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you from the Philippines. Mr. Thank you. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Tupas. Mr. Tupas, what should I yes. say uh, uh, for thank you? Uh, is it salamat? Salamat, sir. Salamat. Salamat. Ah, salamat. Okay, salamat. <laughs> Sige, sorry. I, I hope you can uh you can come to Indonesia, uh, come to our uh, campus. <laughs> yeah, uh that's actually my plan because uh I had a friend uh when we were still um uh, attending the German International Cooperation meetings. Um she is based in uh, what's this? I really, I really forgot the, the exact uh, <laughs> exact name, but she's inviting me to, to visit Indonesia. Hopefully, okay. sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, so see you in the PNL. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Salamat. Okay. Salamat, Mr. Tupas. <laughs>